outdoors, it's really important, Carl, to know where you are. And hopefully when you plan your own outdoor adventure, you manage to plan a much better day than today because it's not too good here in Wellington. So Carl, when we're finding our location, there's now some cool technology that we can use, GPS. How does that actually work? Yeah, GPS stands for the Global Positioning System. And I've got a diagram here from Time and Navigation that explains how the system works. But we're actually going to follow the system backwards because we're going to talk about when we switch on the phone, what happens. So you can see here, you're on the ground with your phone and these satellites in space are actually sending a signal and that signal is where the satellite is in space and what time it is. And it actually works out your position by knowing what the time is on your device and working out how long those signals take to travel and then that gives you the location. So key parts of that is that we need to see a number of different satellites and they need to be visually seen so we can't see around the other side of the world with satellites. And we know where these satellites are because we have other stations on the ground, especially all around New Zealand, tracking where those satellites are and how long it's taking the signal to get to those base stations as well. So when you receive that signal, it gives you a location and latitude and long longitude. What does that look like on a map? So latitude and longitude is the world WS84 base grid system that we have. And when we look at our Topo 50 maps, we can see from the bottom that our Topo maps are actually based on New Zealand Geodetic Data in 2000, which also in the notes actually says equates to WGS84. So we use our NZTM grid, which has our NZTM values, but we also have our lat and long grid shown on the map as well. So that's how we take those values in that long and actually convert them to points on the map. And so if you've explored Google Earth, you might have seen those latitude, longitude figures, and that's what they are, the coordinates. So you've got a globe there. How does that help explain it? Okay, so that explains it better because we can see these lines that go around our globe. And if I can hold it up the right way, the lines going from north to south are longitude and the ones going around the world are latitude. And so if we go over to New Zealand, we can see that we're right next to a line. And the interesting one about that is that the Chathams is actually on the other side of the world if you use WGS84, which is kind of weird for New Zealand people to think about. It is indeed. So GPS, it's not 100% reliable always. What can it affect its accuracy? Yeah, that's true. So what GPS does is it works out the time it takes, but it doesn't know the path that the signal is taken. And the path can reflect off all sorts of things. So buildings and trees and everything like that. And even just the atmosphere on a day like today will affect how long it takes for that signal to get through. So you can imagine if you are standing outside the building, the signal from the satellite might actually bounce off the side of the building and arrive at your phone. And when it actually gets plotted, it will actually be plotting a building, uh, sorry, a point inside the building that's in a direct straight line, which isn't where you are. So that's why when we switch on our GPS for the first time, you see it kind of floats around and once you pick up more and more satellites, it's gonna give us a more accurate position. So make sure you've waited a little while when you're using your GPS on a device. Good advice. Hey, thanks, Carl. You're welcome.